Hey folks, how you doing? Much to everyone's surprise, I'm at the office seeing an emergency patient. Actually, I just saw an emergency patient. We're during the COVID-19 kind of crisis, all the offices are shut down. I had an emergency patient that I had to come to the office and see. And that patient's done and out and we've disinfected and cleaned everything out. And I've even changed gown, by the way. I'm sitting here and I figured I'll use the time to do a quick little uh, demo of a question that has come up since my last videos on a series of applications for the BC liner ha I had prepared. And one of them was, how can you avoid getting voids in the bulk fill when you're using the material for its seventh use, which is a long-term provisional. By the way, speaking of this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the fact that I've been doing bulk fill with the BC liner over the past few months has come to save me quite a bit because I can't tell you how many of the cases that I have had that have been in transition from going from my endo to the restorative dentists. And they're calling me and saying, I thought you told me that I have to get the core and the crown within the next uh, three, four weeks. And now my restorative dentist office is closed. I don't know what to do. I'm freaked out. And it's wonderful to know now that I can call them and I call them back and I say, look, I have put in a material in there that is going to be good for as long as six months, if not longer. Of course, this is not usually what we tell patients because if you, as soon as you tell them you have something in there that's so strong, it would be, uh, you know, people are gonna procrastinate. But the, mo the main point here is that using the BC liner as a bulk fill has helped my office be able to reassure patients that we're in transition now, that we're not in cotton and cavid, to know that there is no harm to their tooth while they're waiting until this COVID-19 crisis is over and people can proceed to get their final core and crowns. All right, but let's get back to the topic. I wanted to show you how you can avoid getting voids into your preparation. And I had mentioned before, the material comes with this shorter mixing tip, but uh, that's great for using it as a liner. You do need, if you want to use it as a bulk fill, you do need to use the longer mixing tip instead of the shorter one. And the technique is fairly simple. What you end up doing is you obviously first bleed the syringe a little bit. That's very important to do that. And by bleeding the syringe, what you're doing is you're making sure that you have the same amount of uh, catalyst and base right at the tip of the mixing syringe. And then what you would do is you would put on this tip Okay, and then kind of bend it any direction that you want. What I'm going to do right now for you is I'm, I've prepared this little cavity in this resin block and it's the dimensions are deep and the width is kind of similar to what you normally see in an axis preparation uh, on a molar. And I'm going to show you how we are going to uh, fill. So you do need to use an orange filter here in these cases so that the material doesn't start to set right inside your uh, mixing tip. But then as soon as the material comes out, what you wanna do is you wanna discard the first few, just a little bit of it like that, okay? So that's discarded. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go to the base of the preparation and just very gently put the material down and kinda work it into the floor but then once it's completely filled out just like you would be doing with a flowable composite you would be kind of bringing this out the tip of the syringe has to be submerged okay it's submerged i'm moving it a little bit from side to side and then kind of making sure that the tip does not co come out and go back in and what this is doing is it's just kind of moving it up and as you can see I'm kind of going back and forth a little bit here and filling up. And if you see any type of a little void coming out, you could use the tip to kind of burst that bubble or void right there. There you go. Keep the tip submerged the whole way. And there you go. You now have it all the way. I like to kind of just go a little bit over the margins. Ideally, what you want to do with your preparation is you want to put a tiny bit of a bevel on your margin so that it is going to have a better adaptation. You don't want to have a 90 degree cable surface margin. Then you would let this kind of stay in place for about 40 seconds, as I've mentioned before. And the purpose of that is so that you can, it can do its etching and bonding uh, itself. I'm holding the filter myself. Uh, in this particular case, normally your assistant would be holding it, or if you have a scope that does have an orange filter uh, on its own, then you would be applying it. If you're not using a scope and you don't have a high energy uh, light on your loops, 
you're just using the regular light from the uh, uh, from your chair you do not need to have an orange filter but after a few seconds then you would be letting it go and frankly the light from the microscope is enough to make the material have an initial set and the final set of the material itself is about two and a half to three minutes at, at body temperature but uh, this would be enough but if you want you can just apply a quick a short burst of light to the surface and then as soon as the surface gets hard then what you would do is you would uh, you'd be able to take off the rubber dam and take your x-ray and see how it goes and now we're going to just remove this and take an x-ray of this thing to show you how this looks so let's do that and as you can see here's the final uh, fill with the x-ray showing that we managed to kind of fill this little cavity without a void by using a longer mixing tip as well as kind of moving this slowly and bringing it up having the tip of the mixing tip submerged in the material and if you ever see if you're using high magnification you can see a void form you can use the tip to kind of burst at the end if you see voids you can also use an explorer to burst them but the main key here is bleeding the syringe bleeding a little bit from the tip of the material before you apply, then applying slowly and moving, keeping the tip of the syringe submerged slightly, just very ever so slightly, it should be submerged and uh, bring it out. And this way you can avoid getting porosities in your fill in your uh, bulk fills of uh, BC line off. All right, that's it. I'm done at the office. I'm gonna go ahead back home in my own quarantine. Uh, for those of you watching this from the future, I hope things turn out well and uh, we don't have a zombie apocalypse. And until uh, the next video, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.